Hi, my name is Ron Johnson, and what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. If you're in a position where you feel that you're lacking fulfillment in relationships, career, or even self-care, this is where I can help. Um, I'm pretty much a mindful coach, and I help people live life better than what they're living right now. So today's topic is overcoming uh, shame around sexual desires. And let, let's first talk about my example. And um, I grew up very religious. I'm not going to talk about what religion I grew up because I respect everybody's religion out there. And I don't want Facebook, you know, taking my video down because I'm shaming a religion. It's just where I grew up. If you want to know my religion, you can always go to Life's a Shuffle podcast. We can see what religion I came from. I talk about it vividly all the time. Not that I'm upset, but when you bring more awareness to what's happening, it creates a change and change came within. So, I grew up in a certain religion where uh, masturbation as one of those forms was very shunned upon. And uh, I remember as a kid, not only just getting, getting butt whippings, getting put on punish, punishment, uh, my daddy read a scripture in the Bible, which is, thou shall not throw your seed on the ground and whatever. But, you know, when you're 10 years old, you know, someone reads your Bible scripture, it's like a foreign language. I mean, what's really happening and that scripture is being said, you can't interpret it. You're asking your parents to interpret it for you. Even then, I was actually getting, you know, my stepmom caught me a couple of times because my dad remarried. I would actually get, you know, buttons from her. She'd go tell my dad I was being made fun of. And what really started happening is that those desires that had been talked about instead of being understood were now becoming covert. I would say more uh, repressed means that I didn't talk about it. I didn't want to be caught. I was scared. I mean, vividly scared. So what starts happening, especially in the 90s, you know, those that remember dial-up modem, then AOL disk, and I'm researching, looking up porn, looking at different things because I didn't understand what's happening to me. And, you know, religion was big in my family, and that's how they lived their life. They read a Bible scripture and expect a 10, 12-year-old boy to understand what's happening, and you don't. And that's just the reality of that. So I became shameful of, of masturbation and not just masturbation but understanding my body and how my body responds and you know what, what really start happening is that when you start repressing these emotions your your body you inherently start looking for answers start trying to self-medicate as best way to put it and a lot of times you don't get the correct information and a lot of times you get too much information which can be overwhelming too we get so confused and not, you know, at the, at the time in the 90s, not sitting down, especially the religion I came from, sitting down with a therapist or a psychologist or a life coach was, you must have some serious problems. You know, you got you to turn to the Bible. And if you have any problems, which sometimes, you know, you really just need help. So what happens is that now it becomes covert, underground, not talked about, not understood. And what starts happening is that that's how I start realizing my relationship with Women was derived from sex. The, the, the better sex there was, the more I thought they cared about me, the better sex there was, the more I saw, thought about showing love. Because here the idea is now is that how our love languages are different from person to person. So how I receive love and how I give love was through connection, touch, sex, and all this other stuff. Because I was not understood. And like I said before, your, your kid trying to find out what's going on in your body. And if you're being shamed, if you're being you know, in trouble, getting butt whipped, being put on punishment. I mean, what do you expect to really happen? So today's topic, and that's my story, today's topic is talk about overcoming uh, shame and sexual desires. Now, I'll put this out there. I don't dis I don't agree with any child molestation. I don't agree, agree with any sex trafficking of, of those sorts. I do not like that. Come from a person that was molested as a kid. I will not condone this kind of behavior. So th this is not about, hey, I desire to be with someone of a minor or I'm in sex trafficking. It's more about understanding you and I as we're consenting adults that can understand how to navigate these feelings or why should I be shame? You know, when I, in the religion I grew up in, the, the shame was that if you're homosexual, it's a shame. Well, what if you just love other men and that's okay? So the point being is that 
the way to overcome shame is you got to think about the point in your life where you were a kid, especially a kid, because now I did some more research and uh, those that don't understand NLP, stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, is there's a period in your life between zero to seven where you were given programming. My program was lit religion in this case where I was shamed about masturbation. But there's a programming that was given to you at a certain point in your life where what you were doing sexually, be it that you like the same sex or be it start liking women or you have these certain desires or shame upon. You go back to those time periods in your life and you got to figure out what was said, what programming actually was there that you yourself did not understand and you yourself were shamed because it's not where you are now. It's really what happened back then or growing up, what you were told, what you understood to be the fact you're ashamed. So go back, find out where it was, especially in childhood, what were feelings coming up? Why was it ashamed? And ask yourself, is what I'm doing really shameful? Is what I'm doing really hurting other people? Is what I'm doing really just who I am? Again, I don't condone any child molestation, sex trafficking, this time about two consenting adults, or just the fact you want to receive love a different way. And that's totally okay. So as I went back to my childhood, I realized the program I was receiving, I became very shameful of that. And by understanding now, wait a minute here, it was religion that was telling me it was wrong. So thus it became covert. And now realizing I have no idea to be shamed about how I feel or shame the fact that I want to receive love through sex or I want to see love through touch. When you find out where you were shamed and you find out where those fears come from, the fear can be being told, the fear can be made fun of, the fear can be you're different. Is that fear really true to you today? And if the fear is true to you today, have you actually challenged that fear? And have you challenged the things that come up during this fear? Because the only, let me tell you this, fear never goes away. So the idea that, oh, one day I'm going to get over it, one day I'll get better, it doesn't exist. <laughs> fear doesn't just go away. I mean, you, you create new levels of fear, I mean, but fear doesn't go away. The more I understand is have you stepped into that power? Have you stepped into understanding what the fear means for you? And have you got help for that? See, the idea really is if you can't understand where you are, the best thing in life is to really get out there and get help where you should be because you have a right not to feel so shameful where you are. Again, through two considering adults and a healthy sexual relationships, that's what I'm talking about, okay? That's where I got my shame from. And when I was able to figure out where it came from is right at the point where I was able to release the fact I'm perfectly fine the way I am. I'm perfectly fine with who I've become. I'm perfectly fine with now, wait a minute here, that's my, that's my, the way I show love. And when you can step into the fact that you're perfectly fine where you are, you're nothing to be ashamed about, is when you then progress forward and getting better understanding about yourself. So I hope, I don't want to make the video too long, but I hope you guys get an idea about shaming, where it comes from, and how to overcome it. And the major thing is just really get help. If you're facing these issues, you're misunderstanding it came from somewhere as being a child. So this is where you can actually get better at standing for yourself. So thank you for listening to another live video by Ron Johnson, mentor coach, mindful coach. You know, I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. If you want to hear more about my story, you can also go to www.lifesashuffle.com and where I talk about my story on my podcast with my co-host Gloria. But if you guys need help, you can also find me on a www ronbusinesscoaching.com because I feel you have a right to be empowered, you have a right to feel better, and all the power inside you. Thanks for listening.